Thanks very much. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, I think we're taking questions at the end, if I uh, remember the protocol. But uh, what I'm going to do is talk about an ecosystem that's developed around open source projects and how project-based uh, innovation participating in, in uh, software projects and, uh, and open hardware projects uh, creates a set of norms, uh, cultural norms that, that change the way that we participate and the way we develop uh, intellectual property. Uh, no longer is it, a, uh, is it purely a decision of a one or a zero to patent or not to patent, but it's how we, how we invent and what we file on and what we seek to protect within the communities uh, that open source supports. Uh, we may or may not be aware of it, but Linux and open source is pervasive. Uh, we see it in uh, telecom and mobility, the Android platform, which represents about 70% of the global smartphone uh, world. WebOS, Tizen, Firefox OS are all present in that world as well. In fact, uh, Samsung uh, and Intel's joint venture, Tizen, uh, a Linux-based platform, launched its first uh, uh, smartphone here in the Indian market. This is their first uh, global launch of any product from that platform, and it was launched three days ago here. Uh, the, uh, uh, on the enterprise side, Red Hat, uh, and SUSE and Chrome, to a lesser extent, have become quite uh, prevalent. Uh, Red Hat's making great inroads in this market, in fact, and uh, is hiring and, and uh, looking for and expecting continued growth in the enterprise and personal computing en environment. Uh, on the auto side, we're looking at Android and Tizen that are being designed in for, uh, in fact, next model year, but we'll see it actually in a big way in 2017 model year. Uh, Samsung's been working with uh, uh, Toyota and Jaguar on the Tizen uh, platform, so the Tata people are directly involved in working uh, with uh, their very successful car platform to be able to first work on delivering a Linux-based platform inside the cabin of the future, um, the infotainment system, but ultimately the digital DNA of the vehicle will be entirely based on, uh, on Tizen. BMW is actually developing around Android. WebOS was purchased as a, it's an open source platform, a Linux-based platform that was purchased by uh, the people at LG. It's now transforming the smart TV space into something that's far more accessible and user-friendly. And what they're doing with this platform is, uh, is, uh, is creating a uh, uh, the center of, of home networking, and they plan on actually utilizing the refrigerator, which they have a, a significant white goods position, and, the, uh, and the, the smart TV as the vehicles through which we control HVAC and all other, uh, um, the, all other uh, uh, networked devices inside the home. Everything that has an IP address will ultimately con be controlled by the smart TV and through the, uh, the web OS platform that, uh, that LG is envisioning. This is a community um, that develops these kinds of applications and these platforms that are leveraged that's done so through, through open collaboration. It's really taking the idea of open collaboration. If you were here for yesterday afternoon's presentation, uh, I think the second presentation in the afternoon, there was a, an excellent presentation on, on where we've come from in terms of open collaboration and how we innovate. Uh, what this is really doing in the open source modality, which is more, it's more of a modality, it's the way we invent and the way we create uh, value in the new economy. It's the kind of innovation that radically transforms existing markets or creates new ones. It's not merely incremental innovation that we're looking to, to get out of the, this, this process of collaborative development, collaborative invention. And it also supports the idea that one plus one plus one doesn't equal three, it equals six or 10 or 20, because we're distilling a collective intelligence of, a, of, of people across the globe around these platforms. It's not just people in Silicon Valley or people are, are Route 128 in Boston or people in, uh, in other, other places around the world where technology development has typically been, uh, been fostered. And so you have licensing that occurs where they, they establish rules of behavior under the licensing approaches that are adopted, whether it's the GPL, uh, which is the general patent license, or the general public license uh, for copyright, copyleft, uh, Apache, 
BSD, uh, which is the Berkeley license, and then you have ways of managing uh, your, what you're putting into your code, where you've taken software from. You keep track of it with, with Black Duck, which is a tool or a binary analysis tool, which helps you stay in compliance so that you have a govern governance program so you can sort out what's open and what's closed and you understand where you've sourced code, um, which is all that the, the copyright, uh, world, copyright management and copyright holders are looking for. On the patent license and, and pledge side, you've got uh, what, what uh, I support, which is Open Invention Network, which is a, a, the largest patent non-aggression community in the history of technology. And you have uh, patent elements within the GPL and within other uh, licenses. So collaboration and interdependence uh, are embedded in the culture of open source uh, community participation. Uh, you have over 350 active open source projects that work along uh, to solve sp specific uh, technology problems. Uh, and there are as many as 500 companies in some of these projects. Uh, patent on aggression, we have over 1,250 uh, licensee participants in our community. Uh, that are pledging patent on aggression uh, to be able to support open source. And there are uh, unilateral pledges and, and, uh, and promises that are made by a whole variety of companies. Quietly, over the last 10 years, we've become the largest patent on aggression community in the history of technology and the structural guardian of Linux and really this way of life that, uh, that is open, open source. Uh, the, there's a parallelism between what we're requesting of people and the, the community that we're fostering where people recognize that you need to be able to collaborate together to be able to yield new novelty. Uh, by the same token, they're also recognizing in very significant numbers now that you need to practice patent on aggression in certain, in certain technology areas to be able to support core development of, of new technology. This whole notion is really uh, embracing the idea of coopetition, which was first, first uh, uh, eloquently argued in a uh, uh, Harvard Business Review uh, uh, article that came out in 1994. Uh, and really what, what we do is define what's core to Linux, what's core to open source, and, uh, and create a patent non-aggression zone and require a pledge in return for access to our 900 plus patents and applications. There's a cross-license that's created and a, and a forbearance to sue obligation that is, uh, is required by participants in the community. Uh, the, the invention strategy ends up tracking with, uh, with the, the market competition zone. Much more invention higher in the stack in the application layer and much less lower in the stack. Um, and so patents are not... Uh, not uh, Patenting and open source are not mutually exclusive. There are significant opportunities for patenting uh, and, uh, and many, many companies that are, uh, have uh, long-standing positions of patent filing and uh, like IBM and others uh, are uh, very active in, uh, in open source. In fact, uh, it's allowed growth to occur over the last 15 years for some of these companies where during in a proprietary world they were far more constrained. A couple of observations. Uh, Project-based innovation is really what I'm talking about to create these ecosystems. Uh, innovation increasingly c occurs in global projects where uh, co-opetition is manifest. Um, this is really an extension beyond what you saw yesterday if you, if you heard that presentation. And uh, an example of that, the cloud of the future and OpenStack uh, technology and code is being developed at uh, an unprecedented rate. In fact, it, other than Linux, which is an open source project, uh, the most prolific open source project is OpenStack. Uh, there are uh, over 450 active participants. There are another 500 companies that are observers uh, of the technology development path of OpenStack. It is, it is open to everyone. Uh, in fact, uh, our most recent signatory on a license yesterday at end of day was, uh, is a company that's, uh, that's driving uh, cloud solutions here in the Indian market. Uh, the risk to global companies seeking to, to compete uh, going forward is quite significant if they don't participate in project-based innovation. Uh, they essentially run the risk of attempting to try to duplicate from uh, first principles technology that, that's being developed on a collaborative basis uh, and they risk uh, being left behind and disenfranchised in the global competitive environment. 
So they can take advantage through, through an open source modality, you can take advantage of, of the collaborative uh, product, uh, the output of collaboration, and then build on top of that, layer on top of that, your unique solutions that, that may be proprietary. But down in the stack, you have an area, that, that cooperation zone, which yields a fertile environment for new novelty to be laid on top and for new products to be developed. Uh, and so e even companies that have a long history of being solely proprietary, like Microsoft, have appreciated the uh, inevitability of, uh, of open source and have become active participants, particularly in the OpenStack project, uh, and uh, Microsoft Azure, which is their, the cloud, cloud offering that Microsoft has in the marketplace, uh, is essentially enabled by uh, code that comes out of OpenStack, and they have uh, actually been a significant contributor back of code to this project. So a summary of what Open Invention Network is, it's uh, open to all, it's royalty-free access to all owned and Linux-related cross-licensed patents. It's a global solution. We have more licensees, participants in EMEA than we have in the United States. Uh, Asia is where we're looking to expand significantly, which is one of the reasons I'm here. China and India are two most significant target countries to be able to grow. Uh, the extension of this community that we built of 1,250 plus licensees. Uh, and uh, we've invested over $90 million in patents that we make available on a royalty-free basis to anyone who commits to patent non-aggression in, in that zone of, of, uh, uh, of core technology that supports these kinds of projects that we're talking about. And uh, we produce defensive publications. I think there hasn't been enough discussion during the, uh, the, the, the days leading up to, the, to this conclusory uh, um, uh, panel about defensive publications and about the value of, of, create, of, of utilizing this vehicle to be able to, uh, to foster an environment of patent non-aggression, to be able to clear away by codifying prior art, to be able to clear away opportunities for people to file uh, patents. And I think hybrid strategies are very useful. Uh, the leading patent, patenting company historically and traditionally uh, over the last 20 years, uh, IBM files thousands of defensive publications a year that serve as protective uh, uh, support structures that enable their, their core filings of patents. Uh, and I, I'd recommend that that's something that, uh, that people look at when they're looking at developing patent strategies. And then over 350,000 patents, which are part of the Potential, potentially part of a cross-license, depending upon their relevance to the Linux system. Uh, sample OAN licensees, Google, IBM, Red Hat, Novell, Sony, all these companies. And NextGen, the company I mentioned earlier, as I said, just signed. It's just coincidental that they signed yesterday as our most recent licensee. Uh, they're a company that enables the, the cloud and uh, are based in Bangalore. Creativity in this space and, and patent non-aggression doesn't only come from Open Invention Network. The uh, LOT program, which is license on transfer that Google authored uh, with the support of industry uh, several years ago and launched just uh, six months, a seven months ago, has already uh, uh, attracted 15 participants and is growing quite rapidly. Essentially, this program is designed to uh, discourage uh, the transfer of patents to, uh, to non-practicing entities and private the concept of privateering. Uh, in addition, unilateral pledges have been made on a regular basis by, uh, by companies, uh, Red Hat, IBM, Google, and Twitter, in fact, have uh, very, uh, very significant pledges of non-aggression uh, of patents in their own portfolio. Thank you very much, and I look forward to questions at the end of the session.